Hello everybody, PJ back again, working on uh, today a Corsa 2006, so one of the older Corsa models. I'm going to quickly show you how to wire a dash cam into the vehicle so that the camera goes on and off with the ignition and that you have no visible cable showing. Now on this particular car the fuse box is located under the bonnet which can be a bit of a pain. So I'm going to show you an easy way to wire the thing in without bothering with the fuse box or anything like that. If you've watched any of my other videos you know I always go to the fuse box and select a, a necessary accessory position fuse. Well these cars are a bit easier. First up we have an ideal list of tools to use. Now I do say ideal, they're not exactly fully needed but some cable ties, you're only going to want two or three not a hundred like we've got here. Long nose pliers possibly, some cable snips, electrical tape and a plastic leverage tool. Uh, basically you don't want to be levering plastic trim with a screwdriver, you will make a dent in it, it will look a mess. We are looking for factory fitted finish so this is probably the most important thing. These are normally made by Bojo or Vibe make them, you can normally get them on eBay or Amazon for about a pound, two pound maybe for a pack of three, very handy things to have or any plastic leverage tool will suffice. I would highly recommend a fitting kit for your camera instead of using the original power cable. This way you get a replacement power cable, like so. Comes with mini USB on the end of this particular one to plug into your camera. Obviously check your camera, some have round powers, some have micro USB, a lot of mini, this is a mini. On the end it terminates in a power wire and an earth wire, nice and simple. You also get in these packs a ferrite filter, which basically pops open and wraps around the cable. I'll show you that shortly. This is to stop or suppress any radio interference. However, on the Corsa, that's highly unlikely, so you shouldn't have a problem with the radio interference. This is just an extra safeguard. The other thing in the packs you normally get are these. These are fuse spurs. These are meant for if you go to the fuse box of the vehicle so that you can double up a socket and convert it into two instead of one to power your camera. We won't be using these on the Corsa because, like I say, the fuse box is located under the bonnet and it can be a bit fiddly to get the power cable through. Obviously, if you want to do that, I do have other videos up showing how to get to the fuse boxes on later edition courses. So before we start actually any technical guide, I just need to say that by following this video guide, I'm held no way responsible or liable for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle. Moving swiftly on. Open up your filter. Uh, they're on little hinges at the back there, looking a little little clips you just pop them open and basically what you're going to do is put your power cable through it wrap it round the back of it and then back out again and then snap it shut like so through it round it back out nice and simple next measure the length of cable above the top of the window screen we normally go to just the left hand side of the rear view mirror where we're going to put our camera so you just need to measure out a bit of cable with our cable measured out, what I normally tend to do is get yourself a cable tie, wrap it round, move along a bit, obviously snip the cable ties, and then cover them in electrical tape. Now the reason I do this is two reasons, um, well two different parts to it should I say. The first reason is your headlining is the only thing supporting the weight of the cable um, with the ferrite filter on the end. If you hit a big pothole there is a possibility the cable can fall down from your headline in front of your view in the middle of the window screen while you're trying to drive along. Not ideal. This way bulks the cable up, gives it something a bit, uh, bit more substantial to stay up there with so it will hold up better without falling down. The reason I cover them in electrical tape is your headlining is made of like a fibre substance, a card substance. If you've ever used cable ties, you know the edge of them can be very sharp. In years to come, or months to come maybe, it could rub on the inside of your headlining and make, make a mark. You don't want that, it's got to look neat and tidy, so just cover it in tape, just pads it out. Like I say, you don't need to do this, it's just something I always do. I've done these for years and it seems to work very, very well. So, continue by covering them all in tape, snipping them off, etc. And then we'll go to line it up at the top of the window. The top here at the headlining, gently you can normally just get your fingers under it, if you can't then use your plastic leverage tool just to pull the headlining down a tad and start tucking your cable up. You will hear it making some crackling noises, don't worry that's quite normal. Um, obviously don't go at it like a bull in a china shop, it's quite 
quite easy to put a big crease in this stuff. So uh, just take care, run it all the way along until you get to the edge here, and then you can tuck it behind the screen pillar, and then we basically pull the rubber trim off and run down the side here like so. Rubber trim, simply just grab hold, pull it away, and we're gonna tuck our cable under here all the way down, down the edge. So at the top corner here, sorry it's a bit dark, the camera's having trouble focusing. There we go, you pull that away look, put your cable behind, tuck it in, can't do it one-handed. <laughs> and then all the way down, down the edge, tuck that in there, all the way down. Now we have our cable in the footwell, we've tapped the rubber trim back on all the way up. Um, nice thing about these older cars is there's no airbag on the pillar to worry about, so we can just literally run the cable straight down, straight down the side here, and then up underneath. Obviously we're going to tuck it up, and if necessary cable tie it all the way along underneath so it doesn't fall down, right high up, as high as you can get it, out of the way. And then normally what I do here, we have a TX20, take this screw out, so we've got some movement here to bring it under this panel. And so, with the TX20 removed from here, we can now basically pull this quite far. So we're going to hook our cable up under the glove box, down here, and, and basically right up here, out of the way, until we can get to here. Okay, we're going to push our cable up there, and that's because the power source we're going to use is the scrap lighter socket. Now, again, you'll notice the trim removal tool there to pop this out on poppers, there we go, and this gives you an ignition switch plus and minus to use for your camera. Um, very simple thing to do, like I say on this car, unplug the connector from the back of your, your cigarette lighter or 12 volt socket, there we go, yeah, there. you'll notice a spare one on the side there, that's an illumination wire, ignore that, but what we're looking at here is the two wires. Now black is power, is plus, and brown is earth. Can't get it the wrong way around, it's impossible. Colour coded on every single Corsa I've ever seen, no matter what continent sold on or what year. If it's an early Corsa like this, Corsa C with the scrap lighter, they're going to be your colours. Black is power, brown is earth. Now because that's out of the way, we can obviously get a hand in there and get right down there where we're going to put our cable. So we're going to tuck a cable up and out the hole. Now I have our power and earth cable come, come through the hole, like I say, from down under here. So like I say, we'll secure it up under the glove box with cable ties. There we go, terminates here, look, coming out here. This is your original plug. I've paired back the uh, electrical tape that was holding this, this wire on. You don't need that, keep that to one side out of the way. We'll tape that up later. Here's your plug with just the two wires showing. Now, obviously, leave yourself a little bit of room on it, so you've got some, uh, you know, spare wire. You want sort of an inch or so of spare wire, ideally. Snip both and hold on to the plug. Don't let it fall down into the gear selector when you do this. So you can either solder onto this or do what I'm doing here, use some bullets. So stick yourself some male bullet connectors on the end that goes to the cigarette lighter socket. Nice and simple. And the female ends, as I will show you, will join the other two bits together. So this bit, make sure you get your colours right, don't get it wrong, otherwise you will pop the fuse to the cigarette lighter socket and uh, you could possibly also damage the camera. So, I'm going to pop uh, a what's it, bullet connector on that very shortly. So red power wire from your camera goes to black power wire to the cigarette lighter socket. Black earth cable from your camera goes to brown earth for the cigarette lighter socket, okay? Twist them two together, pop yourself a bullet connector on the end, hey presto. Now you may feel inclined to put an inline fuse, you may want to put a piece of wire in with an inline fuse in there, that's fine. The camera I'm using has a fuse on the side of it, so it's not really a big issue, I don't need it. And the fact, of course, your cigarette light socket also has its own separate fuse, so it's not needed. If you want to put an extra one in, or your camera isn't a fused camera, fair enough, just pop yourself an inline fuse holder into the power cable quite near the power source. So we're just going to put our female bullet connector on that now and you're ready to plug back together. Just taped everything up just so there's nothing exposed. I'm now going to completely heat shrink or tape up this entire section. Obviously secure the spare wire at the side there as well and tape this down out of the way of the gear selector. 
all neat and tidied up, we can now go ahead and pop this back in, like so, click click. Now we are ready to test the camera. With our camera nicely mounted at the top there, just next to the mirror out of the way, we can turn the ignition on and test that it comes on. And there we go. If you've got to that, you have successfully installed your dash cam into your course to see. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments section below. I do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. But just bear in mind, I do get bombarded with questions every day about all sorts of different vehicles and stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.